Another topic I kind of wanted to cover is uh, light linking. Um, so how you can do light linking inside of Houdini with Redshift. Um, let's just, I, I I have a more in-depth version of light linking that I'm going to be doing uh, later on just to catch some more subsurface on this object once we get into materials and stuff like that. But I wanted to make sure I had some form of light linking mentioned in the uh, lighting section of this course. So let's just create a new light. I'm going to go and let's pretend we're going to under light just uh, we're going to just hit this um, pyro uh, surface with uh, its own light and not have that light affect anything else in the scene. So I'm going to move my camera to be under that surface and I'm going to look right at it. And again, my favorite way of creating a light is holding down the control key and clicking the light button off of the redshift shelf, which is supposed to create one in my view. There you go. You can see that we've got our new light here. And I'm going to just uh, maybe push in a little bit uh, like so. Um, you can see that we actually have controls here. You can push your uh, camera, your, your, your view around using these little handles like so, which is kind of nice. Uh, so let's just turn on a render here and see what we get. You can see that we're illuminating the, uh, we're illuminating everything from below. I'm going to just uh, change the color of this newly created light. Uh, to make it a little bit easier to uh, discern what is going on here. Let's make this a red light, like so. And say we only want it to affect uh, this surface. So we can go to our light and go to the Objects tab. And this is just kind of like the Objects tab over here on the Render Settings, where we had candidate objects we were allowing to be a part of the rendering or not. We can do the same thing right here. So here, we're just going to enable light mesh associations, and then the light is enabled for a star, which means it's ena enabled for everything. And so if I turn this on, uh, you can see that we have this whole list, and we can actually just choose what we want it to be available for. And in our case, that is the pyro surface render only, and say accept pattern. And you can see that we have just linked that light to only this pyro surface right here. If you wanted to do something like make an exclusion and exclude uh, exclude include everything except for the pyro surface, you could go into the selector and shift select everything and unselect the pyro surface, and that would create this pattern as well. Um, I'm just going to put it back to where we had it, um, where the pyro surface itself is selected. The other way you can do it is by using wildcards and um, exclusions. So. Wildcards, basically, you know how we have, if we have this asterisk here, it means just include everything. If I uh, throw down this asterisk right here, that will include everything, including this uh, object pyro surface render. But we can actually exclude this from whatever's being determined by the asterisk by throwing a little caret symbol in front of it. That basically says, um, use this light for everything except whatever this object is. And you can see that reflected in this um, selection pattern as well when we open up this little window. I'm just going to set this back to uh, linking only to, I'm just going to remove the wild card and the carrot just to get it back to linked just to that surface. If we want to do a shadow exclusion type thing, uh, we can do that as well. Let's uh, just create a thing to cast this shadow. I'm going to throw it on a sphere and just uh, throw that into the scene and I will, uh, let's go over here and just position it uh, somewhere below, somewhere below the, um, below this pyro surface. I'm going to uh, restart the IPR. And now you can see that the shadows are actually enabled for this sphere. If I want the shadows to um, pass through this sphere, I could actually uh, do a similar thing here, which is just uh, go open this up and find where that sphere is that we created and control click on it to remove it from the pattern and say accept pattern. You can see that we are um, casting shadows through, uh, we, we are or effectively the light is just traveling through the sphere. So that's one way that you can kind of include and exclude shadows from uh, other objects. And now since we aren't using any of that at the moment, I'm going to just uh, grab the sphere and grab this extra light and uh, I'm holding down shift and selecting both of those and just hitting the delete key to get rid of them and we're back where we were before.